Hello, everyone. I'm Ed Denzel, and I host Unfound, and I run this YouTube channel. I realize you don't want to give a thumbs up to the following video until you watch it. You know what? That's totally understandable. I can appreciate that. But what you can do right now is subscribe to this channel. The button is right there. Thanks. Brenda Sue Davidson was a 13-year-old from Woodbridge, Virginia. She was the oldest of five and tall for her age. On March 4th, 1974, Brenda left for school. Accounts are wide-ranging as to what happened after this, but Brenda did not return home. She was never seen again. I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. One of the best ways to determine what kind of person you are is recognizing how you face adversity. How did you bounce back from failing that algebra test? How did you get on with your life after your divorce? Once you recovered from cancer, what did you do with your life? This topic is important because nothing can be more debilitating and demoralizing and stifling as feeling sorry for ourselves. For families with disappearances in them, this is certainly true, no matter if the disappearance happened last year or 30 years ago. Everyone in that family must find a way to make the most of his or her life, while at the same time doing the best that can be done to figure out why their loved one went missing. Some do this well, Others, not so much. It's a very delicate balance. Well, with the disappearance of Brenda Davidson, you're going to hear about a family that learned to cope. In fact, maybe a little too well. Because, strangely, life went on. And now a summary of the case. This is brought to you by my friend Megan Lyoness's website, Charlie Project. Dot org. Brenda was the oldest of five, her being born in 1960 and her only brother being born in 1970. Between them, yes, three girls. Yeah, that brother had it rough. Brenda's family lived in a trailer, but surprisingly, most of the children had a bit of privacy, with tall bookcases between beds. Brenda had friends in this community. In fact, one of them eventually sent a bunch of pictures of Brenda to her one sister. Photos the family probably didn't know existed. However, there were issues. Brenda and her father had a contentious relationship. For example, him hacking off much of Brenda's hair while in a rage a couple years before her disappearance. So, on March 4th, 1974, a Monday... Brenda walked to school. What happened after this is unclear. She might have never made it to school. Brenda might have told one of her sisters at school that she was running away. Brenda might have been escorted by two boys to a local bus stop so she could run away. Brenda's father might have picked her up halfway through the day. There's no proof for any of these stories. However, most importantly, she was never seen again. There were no searches, no flyers posted. In fact, in 2022, we are not even sure if the police knew about her disappearance at the time. All that is clear is that same day or shortly after, Brenda's father was seen crying about her inside the Davidson home. As you all know by now, I am very picky about the child disappearances 
unfound will cover. There are usually too many dynamics involving who can be trusted and the wide range of stories to usually put together a cohesive understanding of what actually happened. However, I decided to feature Brenda's disappearance because it reminds me of another one unfound as covered. See if you think the same as you also try to answer these three questions during the interview. Number one, at the time, in 1974, was it logical for the community to think Brenda ran away? Number two, how do you explain the Davidson family's behavior after Brenda went missing? And number three, why did Brenda's mother wait for over 10 years before revealing allegedly true stories about Brenda's disappearance? The Davidson children are deeply divided on what happened to Brenda back in 1974. The guest for this episode is Brenda's youngest sister, Lisa Davidson. Unfound News. The July episode of Unfound Now is now available to the public on the Unfound podcast channel on YouTube. I detail and analyze the disappearance of Dana Smithers of Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, who disappeared on May 28th of this year. Next, here's the upcoming schedule for Unfound. August 19th a regular disappearance episode. August 26th, update episode number 12. Can you believe it? September 2nd, the 6th anniversary episode. After that, we go back to the regular format that you've grown to love over the last six years. After that, we get back to disappearances, and I think I know which case the September 9th episode will be. Finally, for those of you who now enjoy the Unfound live show on this audio feed, that show will become its own podcast in September, meaning you will have to subscribe to it in your podcast platform, just like you've done for this one, to hear it. Yes, it will still be free. Where you can find Unfound. On these following podcast platforms. Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and many others, especially outside the United States. Social media sites, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the newest one, TikTok. Listener support sites, patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast, paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast. The website, theunfoundpodcast.com. The email address, unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. And please mention Unfound at all true crime websites and forums. Thank you. I'm so happy to have on this episode of Unfound the sister of Brenda Davidson, Lisa Davidson. Lisa, welcome to Unfound. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you on the program, and thank you for doing this interview in both audio and video for those uh, YouTube uh, members out there. Thank you. Let's start here. Let's just talk a little bit about your family. Um, the listeners should understand that when Brenda went missing, you were seven at the time, so let's uh, all remember that. But um, how many children in your family uh, maybe talk a little bit about your parents, what their work was, the uh, Davidson household in the early 70s. Okay. Um, we lived in a, a mobile home park, uh, Gleaton's Mobile Home Trailer Park. Um, we had um, five in the family, five siblings, five children all together. Wow. Brenda was the oldest. She was born in 1960. And then uh, Barbara Jean, which we called Sissy, uh, was born in 61. And then Janet, which we just called her Jan, was born in 62. And then I came along in 67. Wow. And then my brother, uh, 
Charles, named after my dad, but we called him Chip. He was born in 1970. Okay, the same and, year uh, I was born. Okay. So uh, <laughs> four girls and then a boy. Do you think your parents were finally happy to, to get a boy or, or, or what after four girls in a row? Right. Uh, <laughs> my mom was pregnant before me um, oh. with a child and she lost uh, it. Uh, so that's that's what she said. If we'd have had a boy, then you and your brother wouldn't have been here. And I'm like, well, wow. thanks, mom. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, yeah. no, that's nice to say. Okay. <laughs> All right. But, so um, five kids, four girls, and one boy over the span of about 10 years. Yes. Okay. Um, you're, the way you remember it, your uh, older sister. She had three sisters that were fairly close in age within one year, 60, 61, 62. Then you in 67. And then... Um, your brother in, in 1970. Those three sisters, uh, of course, including Brenda, would you say that the way you remember it uh, at the time, close? Uh, of course, they were probably in successive grades to each other. How do you remember those three getting along? I feel like they pretty well hung out together and got along. I don't ever remember them not having, you know, things to do together with being so close, you know, in age together like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know uh, Brenda had her own room and then Jan and Sissy had their own room back in the seventies. So, okay. All right. And maybe it's a little uh, difficult, you know, being five years younger than your next oldest sister, it's kind of a, you know, a, a, an expanse there, you know, you know, that youngest one is 10, you're five, maybe now, you know, of course, this all these years later, five years difference is no, nothing. But maybe at that time, kind of a big deal between like a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old or 13-year-old. Yes. Big difference. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you for that. What about your parents? Uh, how long um, were they married? Let's just say at the time of uh, Brenda's disappearance, what did your dad do for work? Did your mother work? What did she do? Um, they... Uh... Let's see, they they met in Maryland. My mom was pretty young, I, um, fifteen, I think, when she met my dad. Wow. Um, they, my mom, in the beginning, I remember we went to uh, Marumsco Baptist Church, and they had private school. So my mom drove the bus for the church to help pay for our tuition, huh. and we went there up until my third grade year and then I went into public school because the uh the pastor there built a bigger church and it was just I guess the tuition was just too high for my mom and okay. um, so we all public school and uh, she started grooming dogs uh with another lady and then eventually opened her own business uh right there in, at our home um my dad was a carpenter and he worked a lot in the Fairfax, Alexandria, Washington, D.C. area. And um, he had uh, bought a construction trailer and connected it to our regular home. And she just worked right from home. So, Okay. All right. Uh, how would you maybe uh, explain the Woodbridge area of Virginia? How would you explain it? My understanding is it's changed quite a bit since the early 70s, kind of grown up. But maybe back at the time, how would you explain Woodbridge, Virginia? Um, back then, it seemed pretty simple. But yeah, I don't recognize anything when I when I go back now. I don't. I'm lost. So mm -hmm. it's grown up quite a bit. Uh, the mobile home park is still there. Huh. Do that. Um, but I mean, if I had to explain everything now, the mm -hmm. schools apparently, you know, they're still in the same place, but it's not a hop skip and a jump anymore to get to it so yeah it's really Back grown up. It was, a lot of more people live in that area now i guess yeah i mean it was pretty simple back then um i can't remember it being as you know grown up as it is now so right just to give maybe give the people idea an idea uh when you graduated a high school how many were in your graduating class how big was your high school class just maybe given an idea do you even know Right. Um, well, and that's the thing to, to bring up my, I was a teenage mom and I wasn't able to oh. graduate high school. 
Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sorry for asking that. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, here I am discovering something new about Lisa right during uh, the interview. Okay. Well, thank you for that. But it's changed quite a bit uh, from the 1970s uh, to now. Maybe that shouldn't be um, uh, any uh, a big surprise. What would you say the overall um, you know, kind of personality of your family was? Laid back? Uh, life of the party type of people, introverted, extroverted. How would you explain your family? Um, my dad worked a lot. Um, he was usually up and gone by the time we got up and got ready for school. Um, him and mom would get up in the mornings. Mom would cook him breakfast, um, pack his lunch. They'd have coffee together and I guess just get their day started. And then up, once he was gone, mom would, you know, start getting us ready, and tell us to get up and get ready for school. Um, they, uh, I mean, they were, um, they did like every summer we'd go to the beach. I remember that we've been to different beaches. My dad was a big fisherman. He loved to be out on the, the river fishing. Uh, we would go to church every time the doors were open at Marumsco Baptist church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, but my dad didn't go with us, um, mm. in the church with us. Um, mom had her church friends and then the, the ladies in the park that a few that she associated with. And then dad pretty much kept to himself and just worked and went fishing when he had a chance to go fishing. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we get a good idea about, uh, your family and what your father was doing, what your mother was doing. And all right, so let's move on to this. Let's just talk about uh, Brenda herself. Now, I'll remind everybody again that uh, you were very young when she went missing. But do you uh, personally remember her? Do you remember, of course, she would have been twice your age. She would have been 14 when she went missing. Um, do you remember talking to her? Do you remember having interactions with her? Uh, were you old enough to remember that back then? The only thing I remember is um, she would ask me to do like little karate chop massages on her back and give me <laughs> a quarter for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, it's just the photos that I see of together. I don't remember them. Uh, pictures of us at the beach or pictures of us, you know, at the zoo, uh, nice. things like that. But I don't remember it. Um, she did have a Miss Beasley doll that I thought a lot of um, that got my attention quite a bit. I don't know what happened to that Miss Beasley doll. Hmm. Um, do you remember what a Miss Beasley doll looks like? I, I, I do not. Uh, maybe I'm sure many of the listeners do, but I do not. Oh, do you have one? I have one. It's not Brenda's, uh -huh. but this is a, oh, my oldest daughter found this and gave it to me as wow. a gift. Just that I thought I'll okay. just, uh, uh, I guess okay. they're vintage. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, neat. So that's that's the only two things. The the little karate chop massages for a quarter, and I thought that was a lot back then. A quarter, you know, it, it was to a seven-year-old. Save them up and uh, put them in that uh, quarter horse ride, you know, at the drugstores. Uh, they had the Yes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I remember that out in front of Kmart or whatever. Yes, I remember those. Yeah. Okay, so, and maybe we shouldn't be surprised for that. You know, she's a teenager. You're seven years old. She has two other sisters who are much closer to her in age. Uh, you know, they have their own circles of uh, friends and where they're hanging out. And then you're at seven years old. So maybe it's not uh, unusual that you just have, you know, maybe a couple memories of things that uh, you can recall now. Okay. What, uh, over the years, though, maybe since... Maybe people who you've uh, run into, who knew um, Brenda, what did they say about her personality? What have you learned about her personally uh, over the years since you bec uh, uh, became an adult and then, of course, started working on her disappearance? What have you learned about her? Uh, when I met her Facebook page, that brought out attention um, mm -hmm. because uh, a girl reached out to and said that she was her best friend and that um, she thought that Brenda thought a lot of me that she, you know, watched over me. And um, 
that she just, you know, um, would do it, uh, sleepovers with her. But that was the main person that really spoke up about her. And she sent me pictures of her of when they were growing up together. Wow. So wow. I appreciated her sending me those pictures. Yeah. You had never uh, heard of this woman before until you started the Facebook page? No, I hadn't. Wow. wow. No. Okay. And she said that she had actually had sleepovers. So you have no recollection of this uh, this woman as a little girl coming over to your place or anything like that, or maybe Brenda going over to her place. No recollection of that. And my older sister, Dan and Sissy, they don't remember her either. So, oh. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, very interesting, but that's how Facebook wor works. Even for people who don't have uh, disappearances in their family, you put up a, your, uh, you know, you start an account, and then all of a sudden all these people come out of the woodwork. Hey, I remember you from high school, from college. Maybe that's, maybe this, maybe at least should have been a little predictable. Uh, did she say anything about her personality? Was uh, Brenda popular? How did she do in school? Has this uh, friend been able to pass along anything like that? Um, I mean, she just feels like Brenda wouldn't have ran away. She would have told her, but she did talk about a diary that Brenda had and she had a real one and she had a fake one. And, um, mm -hmm. in case my parents went looking for it and she uh. had mentioned a relationship with a boy in one of the diaries. So, mm -hmm. um, at 13, I guess she was pretty, um, into the boys at, such a young age yeah. uh, okay from... <laughs> okay so uh that's interesting uh we've uh yeah. of course have talked about diaries of missing people usually women uh before this is the first time i've heard of a real one and a fake one uh it seems like brenda was doing a lot of writing yes okay. i don't know what they are but um apparently she had to from what this friend said okay all right all right so Still, though, not sure about her person. Into boys doing these diaries, I think any 13, 14 year old, maybe, and when you're starting to have those kind of feelings and things, maybe that's how everybody treats their parents doing kind of things very secretively. I, I don't think I'm surprised by that. <laughs> so maybe that's uh, um, maybe more common than we think. And of course, we have to remember she was only 14 years old when she went missing, 13, 14 years old. So yeah, let's move on to. Uh, what I would call some issues. And these are things that, of course, are in the outline. Um, I realize that your father is now deceased. He's been deceased uh, for many years, and we are not here to criticize him in, in any way. But uh, I think we do have to talk about maybe your father, uh, kind of um, a stern guy to the point of uh, maybe he had a, was he an alcoholic? What would you say about your father? And I'm not, I'm not looking for you right. in any way to trash your father. I would never do that. Even if somebody asked me, I could never do that to my own father. But what would you say about your father? Maybe his parenting style, his personality, uh, back at the time in the early seventies. Um, he did drink. Um, Budweiser was his go-to, and uh, possibly um, a Tom Collins here or there when we go out to Chesapeake Bay Seafood House. That was the. Mm -hmm a fancy restaurant in Woodbridge there at the time, but um, he would get off work and apparently stop and get beer even before he got home and would start drinking. Um, when we go out for family outings um, to the um, racetrack or um, fishing, he was always drinking. Um, getting out of the Old Dominion Speedway there in Manassas, Virginia after a race, mom would be grabbing the dashboard and hollering Charlie, Charlie, cause he'd get so close and aggravated at the person in front of us. Mm -hmm. Um, everywhere, you know, like I said, everywhere we went, it was, you know, drinking. Okay. So, um, okay. all right. Uh, what would you say about it being that you, uh, of course, uh, we're all much older here now in 2022. You are a parent. I am not. But what would you say about your uh, your father's parenting style, being that you are now a parent yourself? What would you say about his parenting style, given that he uh, was, you know, he was like this? What would you say? Um, growing up, 
I didn't think about it as I was younger, but now when I look back, I was, I was scared of them because, you know, I said I was a teenage mom yeah. and I was, I was pregnant in 10th grade, but I was tell my dad I was pregnant and I carried my child the whole time living at home with my mom and dad and didn't tell them until uh, I went into labor and mom had to go back in the room and tell them she was taking me to the hospital. So that's how scared I was to tell them I was pregnant. And that's just telling on me. But the reason why is because Brenda went missing. My sister, Sissy ran away, apparently pregnant to be with the baby's dad. And then my sister, Jan got pregnant and my mom kept her child and babysat her and took her to work with her in order for Jan to finish her high school 11th and 12th together. Cause she had enough credits to do 11th, 12th to get together and then here I end up pregnant and I felt like I disappointed him because of how my did, but my dad wouldn't let me go to high school football games or anything. Cause he'd say, don't go do nothing stupid like your sisters did. Mm -hmm. And so I never got to do any of that stuff. And I ended up pregnant anyway. I have gotten my GED since then. So um, I wasn't going to let that stop me. That was on my to get list for sure. Because I, I told my girls how important a high school diploma was. And if I had oh. to sit on a high school to get it, they were going to get their high school <laughs> diploma. Yes. So, um, okay. so I was scared of my dad. And yes. uh, that's just, I was just, uh, I didn't feel like I could tell him things. I was worried he'd get angry. Okay. Would you say that he was abusive? Or your mother was abusive? Uh, once again, your experience as a parent now. And I've had people ask me that because back when I was younger, I could hear my sisters crying at night um, in their rooms. And I didn't know if they had gotten whipped with a belt. Um, and I've had people ask me if I was ever, you know, whipped with a belt or anything. And I said, I remember my dad whipping me so hard one time because I didn't listen. Um we were going somewhere and he didn't want me to get in the bathtub to play with the doll that I had gotten. And I got in there anyway. So he jerked me up out of the bathtub, whipped me so hard that I, I peed myself. That's how hard he was whipping me. Okay. Um, as I got to be a teenager, my dad had lung cancer and was very sick and on oxygen. So he didn't have the strength. He, he was just really in and out of the hospital and weak uh, my teenage years. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay, so and what? How did you? How do you think your mother handled this? Handled all this. At, at the time when he whipped me, we were going to visit my mom at the hospital, and uh, one of my mom's family member was there to help. Um, I have been told, you know, since I've been searching for Brenda, that my dad was a mean sob. Okay. <laughs> uh, that. He had cut Brenda's hair off for punishment at one point. Um, like yeah. I said, every go to, he would probably get an argument um, with somebody at some point, you know, and not move fast enough out of his way when he was trying to get out of the parking lot at the, like I said, at the racetrack. Um, my mom played softball and we were at, my elementary school that I remember Elizabeth Vaughn elementary school. And there's a softball field at the top of there. And we were practicing with mom and I on a dirt bike, kept driving by driving by while well, my dad threw the bat at his wheels to try to wreck them because he didn't want him driving through. And mom finally got him to just get in the car and asleep. Um, so I remember that, um, but he was drinking, you know, while we were doing that as well. And sometimes I think back now how we even got home sometimes with him drinking and driving because he drove. Mom didn't. He always drove. Okay. I guess what I'm asking is if your, your father had could be like this, maybe on uh, just when he was drinking, mother come to your, def uh, to your defense, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of stand off, just let things uh, happen. What, what do you remember? I feel like she just kind of let things happen. Like she was scared of them herself. Um, okay. I, I don't, re I don't remember her really ever jumping in and stopping him. Like I said, she finally got him to 
to get in the car and quit. Um, shortly after Brenda disappeared, I know it was within four years because uh, we got a new mobile home and my dad was drinking and he told the guys, um, if you can't set it up in one day, we don't want it. And then mom finally said, just let them do it. They'll get it done if they don't. Well, he finally passed out in the chair um, and woke up to the, the mobile home almost being finished. because The guys were scared to death of my dad. So, um, but he woke up and my mom was standing there and he told her, uh, don't, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Like <laughs> uh, just a crazy saying that I remember. Oh. And, uh, but yeah, he was giving the guys a hard time about even getting the mobile home put in, uh, you know, just in one day, if you don't get it done today, we don't want it. Okay. But, um, yeah. Okay. I all right, don't look, don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm gonna have to remember yeah. that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a funny saying, although it wasn't said under funny circumstances. Maybe in a, yeah. maybe in some more humorous times in our own lives, maybe people in the future will use that line because it is kind of funny. Although <laughs> in this situation, does not sound like it was funny at all. No. Uh, let's move on to this being that you brought it up. Um, you brought up this hair cutting incident. In fact, by the time everybody's seeing us or hearing us. Uh, I will have posted that photo with your, of course, your permission uh, so that people could see, I guess, the after effects of this haircutting. Uh, do you remember it happening? Uh, were you old enough to, to remember? Or were you too young at this point? How long was this before she went missing? What can you tell us about this haircutting incident? And had your father ever done this to you or any of your other uh, siblings? What can you say about all that? Right. Um, the picture of the haircut and how I was uh, told about this was from the best friend of Brenda's, the one that sent me the pictures. And it's dated 1972. Okay. And she sent it to me and she told me that my dad had cut her hair off for punishment. And um, I don't remember him doing that to any of us. I mean, my mom cut my hair off because I screamed and hollered and nothing was helping. So she cut all mine off took me somewhere and cut it off. Uh, my dad didn't cut it or she didn't cut it. But, um, mm. also, um, another thing, um, uh, for punishment was, um, Brenda's best friend and her were walking around the mobile home park cause it makes a circle. And, uh, Brenda kept telling her that we got to get home before my dad gets home. And my dad was coming down the street with a belt in his hand. And he whipped her with the belt all the way home from what her friend told me. Like I said, I, yeah, I don't weren't there. Yeah. That's why yeah. I wanted, wanted to just stick to the haircutting yeah. incident. Yeah. Would you say this yeah. was an isolated incident or would you say this was uh, a common punishment in the Davidson house? I felt like my dad used the belt. Um, mm -hmm. I can't get my other two sisters to tell me anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get into that. We're certainly going to talk about that. But this haircutting incident, uh, what you're saying is it was a couple years before she went missing. And you don't have any recollection of any punishment being given to yourself or your other siblings where their hair got cut. No, no. Okay, that's all I'm – all right. That's all I, I want. I, but it was – so it was a unique kind of incident, but it was a couple years before. And we don't even have any idea what – uh, Brenda did to deserve this. I'm not saying she deserved her hair cutting off, but to right. to earn this, I guess we have, we no. have no idea what she did. I have okay. no idea. Okay, and like I said, by the time everybody's uh, hearing our voices, I will have posted this picture as Lisa just said. It's from 1972, and um, I will post this on, on Facebook and, and on our website, theunfoundpodcast.com. Okay, let's move on to this. So we have a couple things going on in your family. We have a father, uh, seems like uh, when he's under the effects of alcohol, uh, can be a little violent, very angry, but not just with his kids. It seems like with anybody, anybody who's in traffic, anybody who's trying to even help him uh, establish, you know, put in a new trailer home, even angry at them. And we have a mother who may be trying to do her best uh, with her husband who can get out of control. And then you have all these siblings uh, three of them being just about two of them teenagers and one almost a teenager. You have a seven-year-old and you have your brother who was only three or four years old at the time of this disappearance. Yeah. Let's move on to this. Regarding Brenda's disappearance, do you remember Brenda being there and then not being there? 
What do you remember about that time, 1974? And I'll ask you some, do you remember your parents, your sisters ever telling you at the time what happened? How much changed? What can you tell? say, Brenda being there, Brenda not being there? Do you even have that in your memory now in 2022? What I remember and um, the layout of the mobile home, uh, like I said, Brenda had an upstairs bedroom to herself and then Sissy and Jan had a bedroom and then my dad is a carpenter. So he made bookcases to separate this, this room that had like a divider in it. And then me and my brother had bunk beds and my brother had the top bunk. I had the bottom and I came down the hallway and I look in my room and my dad is on his knees on my bed crying. My baby's gone. My baby's gone. I had no clue what was going on. I've never seen my dad cry like that before. Um, and the elderly lady that lived across the street from us, uh, her name is Miss Maxwell. Uh, mom had her take me and my brother to her house. And it's like, we come back. I don't remember if it was that night, the next morning. Um, and it was like, she was gone and nobody talked about it. Uh, nobody asked any questions that I remember uh, mm. up until 1985. All right. And we're going to move up to that. But at the time, what you remember in 1974, and once again, the, we're using the date of March 4th, 1974 as a disappearance date um, for the purposes of this interview and, and official documents and things. But you, but uh, what I would say is you only maybe, what you really don't remember is Brenda not being there, not being there. What you really remember is your father reacting to it. You, you yes. remember this, him being in her room where she would have slept and he's on his knees and maybe crying the only time you've ever seen in your life. Never, well, it was, dad was in my room on oh. my bed. Oh, but okay. Me. Yeah, I, I was just coming down the hall and I look in and my dad, in there crying on my bed and i'm like what is going on you know that's that's what sticks out to me because in my room crying that my baby's oh. gone my baby's gone and i didn't know what was going on okay you, uh, of course you're seven years old i mean i don't know how if it's going to occur to you to ask any uh insightful <laughs> questions uh at that time but it kind of sounds to me like you got whisked away you know yes. from this is uh, maybe your parents we're recovering from this. Um, what do you remember about your how your sisters react to this? Once again, being that they're much older, they're much closer to her age. And we'll get into the stories that you're told, but just reaction of them reacting to uh, Brenda not being around. We'll get into the story about what your sister said, and then she didn't say she said it in here in a moment. But it's just their reactions around the house. Nothing that I remember. I'm... Like it was another day going, you do doing what we do. I don't remember anything. Maybe there was, but I don't remember it. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's totally fine. That's what, that's what I'm asking. Uh, what about your mother? Do you ever remember seeing her crying or, or doing anything like that? No. Hmm. Okay. No. Okay. Um, the way you remember it after Brenda did go missing, just, regarding your house how much changed did anything change or did in your perception did things just uh continue on uh, i'll just ask it as if brenda never existed what would you say that's the way i feel like she was gone and no big deal this oh. is when i look back now it's like i wished i'd have been older so i could have known more i really mm -hmm. do okay so once again, I'm not, I'm not sure this is the effect of you just being seven. It very well could have been just because of that. It, may, it could have been that your parents were shielding you from things. Uh, you know, it, you know, going back to to like 1974, maybe if you were had been in one of your older sisters, a little older, maybe you would have seen more. Maybe you would have heard more. But at seven years old, uh, maybe you can understand if something really bad was happening in the family that. The youngest uh, children, you know, get taken away for a little bit. So you maybe you don't experience some of those things. Of course, that can be very scarring. Okay. When did you first start? Uh, so we're, we're going to get back to that time. We're going to kind of, for the listeners and viewers, we're going to go back to that time here in a bit. But right now, when did you begin to understand as you got to get older, 
what you know understand Brenda being missing when that really began to hit you uh maybe as a teenager as a young woman when did it really s start to understand this whole thing about missing persons and your sister disappeared and she'd been missing from years for years what when did that really uh start to hit you and really understand the gravity of it the the eye opener for me was when my dad passed away in january of 1985 hmm. um, back then uh, we had landlines and if somebody called you and they wouldn't hang up you couldn't get a dial tone so we kept getting phone calls and nobody would say anything and my mom and my older sisters, Jan and Sissy, they were saying, Brenda, is this you? Brenda, it's okay. You can come home. Dad's away. And that's what really got me going. I'm like, wait a minute here. Well, what do you mean? Come home. Where is she? You know? And I just started asking my mom questions. Then when they started saying that, nothing become of that. The, the phone calls finally quit. Mm -hmm. um, so I... I that's what started me on questioning, where is she? Okay. How about, did I understand you um, did not, you ended up getting your GED, but you dropped out because you had a child. But, you know, maybe going into maybe the years before that, maybe getting into junior high, did any other of your friends ever ask you, hey, whatever happened to your older sister, Brenda, did it ever come up? I guess it didn't come up in your family that much. But what about other people in the community, other people, you know, friends of yours, did they ever ask about Hey, whatever happened to your older sister, Brenda, ever come up? Nobody asked until I made her Facebook page. Wow. In 2012. Yeah. Huh. Is, yeah. It your, is it your perception that people didn't ask you, once again, maybe going to the late 70s because they didn't know? Or what is your perception now as to why you were never asked about that back then? Um, I had a... Uh, if it's okay to say, I had one gentleman tell me, you know, now that he's older, uh, around Brenda's age, mm -hmm. he said, if we didn't see Brenda, we just thought she was grounded and couldn't come out. Cause that's what we, we got grounded, put on restriction. Um, if we didn't do something, you know, we disobeyed my dad or whatever. We, yeah. we, we got put on restriction. My main thing was I couldn't leave the yard. So I would lean over the fence and look down and watch the other kids play ball and, stuff in the streets um and i couldn't so um checking in that was something um even when brenda went missing we were still allowed to play out in the streets and um had to check in every hour i did and i think my sisters probably did too um street light come on we better be home or we got grounded um but usually we still played out in the streets kickball um dodgeball, you know, wiffle ball, things like that. I guess what I'm saying, uh, Lisa, is that here you continued on. You went to became 8, 10 years old, 12 years old, 13, 14. You have other kids who are in, in around there, and none mm -hmm. of them, or even maybe some of their parents, maybe when you'd run into one of them, would say, hey, didn't you have an older sister, Brenda, and, you know, did she go missing? Did she come back? Never came up. I mean, I have asked um, mom's friends uh, that mm -hmm. attended church. You know, what What do you know about Brenda? And they're like, we don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, she I, was. I guess uh, it does. It just doesn't sound to me, at least, like there was much curiosity going on. Yeah, that they just didn't think anything of it um okay they I, it, it floors me too because mm -hmm. like i said how i wish i was older back then i mm -hmm. I, I really do yeah. wish i was old yeah and i understand that i guess i, I guess what uh, we're pointing out here is it doesn't seem like people around you who surely knew the davidson family you live in a trailer park. Of course, those trailers are usually pretty close. You have people across the street, people next to you. And in your experience, at least until your father died in what was the year 1985, the disappearance of uh, Brenda did not come up very much, if at all. And the detective that apparently worked the case, uh, my, 
I guess my mom reached out to them, um, ruled her as a runaway and that she'd be back home. So okay. I guess that's what they thought too. She came back home and everything was hunky dory, but that's not what happened. Okay. So the official story, at least in, under the Davidson roof, for your two older your two older sisters, you and then your younger brother and your parents was that she ran away. That was kind of the accepted story. That's what my mother told me in 1985. That's okay. when I started. But it never came up before then. Not that I remember. Okay. No. 11, 11 years. Okay. But if that's, I'm not criticizing. If that's what the facts are, that's what the facts are. Just want to make sure I my, myself and the listeners and viewers understand uh, what you're saying here. She goes missing in 1974. And really the topic of her disappearance does not become a concern until 1985 when your father dies. Yeah. Because I felt like we couldn't talk about her. Like it wasn't okay. allowed. Yeah. Okay. That's very good. Way. Can't answer for anyone else. That's just how I felt that we didn't speak of her in the house. Okay. Like it was hard for my parents. Just we didn't we didn't talk about it. Okay. Now I, I we're gonna get once again to your sisters a little bit more in a bit. But when you weren't around your parents, and I once again understand that your brother was even younger than you were. But regarding your two older sisters, between 1974 and 1985, did the three of you ever have a talk? between yourselves about Brenda's disappearance? Not that I remember, no. Okay, thank you. All right, mm -hmm. let's move on to this. Uh, we're just gonna call this the rest of the case. So as the listeners and viewers can already understand, the circumstances of Brenda's disappearance are a bit nebulous. And so we're gonna try in this next part to try to narrow down uh, what exactly the facts are. Um, what about that missing persons report to this day in 2022? Have you ever, uh, seen the paperwork regarding this? Did your parents file one at the time? What can you say about just the paperwork regarding Brenda's disappearance? I have not seen one piece of paper. I was told, uh, when I reached out to Prince William County police department that without a case number, they couldn't even find the case. I didn't have a case number. My mom said she didn't have a case number. And then after the second detective uh, took the case. Um, what year would this be? Just so we're clear on years. What year? Just pick a year if, approximately. 2000. Um, let's see. 2013. Because I... Uh, reached out to National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, November 22nd, 2013. Okay. And, and got her in their database, got a caseworker, and got in contact with uh, the Prince William County. And they said it was on microfiche, and they couldn't read it. And say there was two detectives, and detective now was supposed to send the microfitch and get it switched over now, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether it's, I don't know, but she is a cold case and it's an open case and they won't tell me anything. Okay. I know nothing. Okay. Of that's, what I, that's pretty standard. Yes. Um, we wish things were a little different, but I can't say that I'm too surprised by that. But I guess what we're saying here is, You've none of them have none of these officers here in the 21st century. We'll just cover the last 22 years um, have ever told you. Yes, we've seen the missing person report that was filed in 1974 or was filed in 1975 or 1980. None of them have ever said that to you. The detective now, all she has told me is that she was sending over the microfiche to get transferred over, but. I, what's on it? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. And she, and so this officer cannot even tell you when this particular microfiche was made. Yeah. No. Okay. So, all right. So maybe we might decipher that to mean that there is, um, uh, a missing person microfiche. Probably the younger people in the audience don't even know what that is, but us <laughs> older people do, don't we? Uh, Lisa, we know what it is, but, um, oh. 
you can put a lot of information on a very little, you know, tiny dot or micro dot or microfiche, something like that. You can put a lot of information on one of these very small things. And, and anyway, um, it very well may be that there is a missing person report that was found at the time. And it's on one of these, one of these uh, microfiche files, but uh, they haven't converted it over to like what we would call like a, a doc file here in the 21st century. Yeah, that's right? what this, this, the detective now is supposed to have done that. Okay. But I'm not sure. All right. Okay. So, and we also have to state, being that this wasn't uh, a big topic, Brenda's dis uh, disappearance was not a big topic in your family, that uh, none of your sisters or your parents ever told you, oh, yeah, we filed a missing persons report for her. None of them ever said that to you, ever. Um, my mom was yelling on the phone one day mm -hmm. and, uh, after my dad had passed away, uh, if my memory serves me right, um, okay. she was, was yelling at somebody. And when she got off the phone, I asked her who she was yelling at. And she told me it was the detective and, um, that he had found Brenda, uh, and she was uh, over, like, behind the Marumsco Plaza apartments. And she was over 18 now. And he can't tell her exactly where. And mom said she went knocking on every door of those apartments looking for Brenda. I don't remember that. I just remember her yelling at somebody. So that is just her telling me that, too. Um, That's just a story. Yeah, just a story. So I, I don't know who she was yelling at. I don't. Um, okay. I, and we have to remember, you said this was after your father died. So this was after 1985. So we're already talking over a decade later. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, All right. But nothing ever about a missing persons report. The only thing I have, and you might have it too, um, that I know, I guess my mother posted is this newspaper clipping. I've got a picture of it. Um, yeah. And I will be posting uh, that as well for sure. Yeah. For sure. I will be that every by the time everybody hears us or sees us, I will have posted that as well. But what uh so for official police purposes though, it's very nebulous as to whether your parents did anything with the police in nineteen seventy four. And just like I said, hearsay. My mother said mm -hmm. that the detective said that uh she was a runaway and she'll come back home and my mom was unfit. That's what my mother told me. So I'm thinking, unfit, okay. Um Okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Now, now you just mentioned uh, that that article, but specifically mm -hmm. for 1974, or maybe let's even go into 1975. Were there any articles written in any local newspapers regarding Brenda's disappearance? This one, that the, the one I showed you, that's the only article that I, I've known. And if if my mom wrote it. Uh, had help writing it. I don't. I don't know. I okay. just. Um, and what year is that from? I don't know. I. I really don't. This is just a picture of it. Mm -hmm. It's cut out, and um, it doesn't have okay. the year. But it's supposed right. to be Potomac View newspaper. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe yeah. I'll be able to find out on newspapers.com to find out what the year was. But I guess what we're saying here, there wasn't hardly, um, if even if that article was written in 1974, there wasn't a lot of media coverage out there either as if the, the public knew that Brenda was missing. No. Okay. No. So it wasn't like, for example, this is just an example. It wasn't like your parents or even your older sisters went out and put, you can make flyers back in the 1970s. It wasn't like anybody went out and put flyers on telephone poles or handed them out in Woodbridge, Virginia. No, I don't think that happened. Um, okay. Like, like again, my mom, that's all I have is what my mom told me, but mm -hmm. mom said drive for hours searching for her until it was time for us to go to bed, you know, just take us out driving. And I asked my sister Sissy about that because she's the next oldest. And she's like, I don't remember mom doing that. But mm -hmm. like I said, right, now I want to I want to come back to that later. We'll certainly talk about that. I'm just worried about newspapers right now. Yeah. Not hard. If any, there was very, very little media coverage of Brenda's disappearance. Nothing that I know of. 
All right. And which is, of course, is a big contrast to the way we do things now and have probably been doing for a while. So I think this is, once again, um, something that's important to understand. We do know that uh, teenage girls did go missing in the early 1970s. And many of them, my perception is at least some of them did get, you know, media coverage for whatever reason. But it seems when, with Brenda's, there was a lot less, maybe, maybe none. Okay, let's move on to this. What about the school? Once again, your understanding that the school that Brenda was going to not inquire, hey, uh, you know, why isn't Brenda coming to school anymore? Do you know anything about any of this regarding what any school administrators might have done to try to inquire, hey, why isn't Brenda at school anymore? I don't remember. No. No, I haven't heard any, I haven't ever heard anything from that from anybody, maybe this friend of Brenda's or your mother, your sisters, none of them have ever, you have no idea regarding any of that. No. Okay. That's totally fine. I bet it's just questions I have to ask. Right. Let's move on to this. Now, this is something, my understanding, I, you'll have to say where you heard this story from and how soon, how close it was you believe to uh, Brenda's disappearance. Let's talk about this shop lifting story we're going to stay stay away from the names we don't want to so much get into the names right now because we're not even sure if these people exist That's because right. i haven't been able to find them but what <laughs> had when did you hear about this shoplifting story what can you say about it right and that's what i'm trying to do because i i'm trying to think before i open my mouth mm -hmm. so it's hard well remember this is being recorded so if you slip up and say somebody's name <laughs> I will surely edit it out. I promise you that. And mainly for the reason that we don't even know if these people exist because I've tried to track them down, as you know, and I haven't been having any success. Let's just talk about the shoplifting story. They allegedly, uh, Brenda got caught up with two other friends getting, getting caught shoplifting. What, what did you hear about this? When did you hear about this? Um, again, my mother, when I questioned her about Brenda, where was she? Um, what she told me was, Brenda had went to Zare's department store with two other girls to get things they needed to run away. And they got caught shoplifting. Hmm. Brenda apparently was letting the girls put things in her purse. And the security guard considered that, that she wasn't actually shoplifting, but that's shoplifting to me. And he let Brenda go home with one of the girls' mothers. Mm -hmm. And for Brenda, Brenda to have her parents uh, come and talk to him about her actions. And that happened the weekend before she went missing. Huh. So mother said that she was probably scared to tell them uh, that she got caught. And so she felt she needed to run away. Okay. Um, when did your mother finally tell you this story? Um. Uh, Pretty much and about, uh, it was after dad had passed away and I started asking her questions of where Brenda was. So right, after so not, that. So not until uh, the mid to late eighties. Yes. Okay. Um, did that, you'd never heard that story before? No. Not even as a rumor? No. Okay. Um, has, uh, have you been, have you, have you tried to know your mother did give you a couple names or somebody else gave you a couple names that who could have been with Brenda if this even happened? Is that correct? Right. All right. And who gave you, who gave you those two names? Um, a girl that was sitting at the classroom table with them and Brenda and the two other girls were talking about going to the department store and getting things they needed. And she's the one that gave me the two girls' names. Um, and as the newspaper clip in it lists that the two girls that she was supposed to leave with were, uh, I think, uh, in Georgia. They got, got caught in Georgia and brought back home. Huh. So yeah. your understanding is then these two girls do exist and they did run away but got caught running away in Georgia. So like a thousand miles away or something. 800 miles away. Yeah. Is there any so, proof of that? Any proof of that? Or is that just a story? I haven't seen any proof. It's okay. just what my mother told me. And then the girl that reached out to, uh, from the Facebook that I made. Mm -hmm. 
stated that she was in class with them and those Brenda and the other two girls were talking about going to the department store and getting what they need. Um, she went home and told her mother, mother's like, Oh, they're just talking. Don't pay no attention. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. I have to ask how did, so this, this woman contacts you, uh, after you start the Facebook page, I just want to make sure I and everybody else understand this. Had, did you write something about the shoplifting story before this woman contacted you or did this story just come out of the blue from her? I was terrible with the Facebook. Uh, it's fine. Brenda Sue Davidson. And I was just calling out everybody. Um, I apologize, but yeah, I was telling everything what my mom said this, my mom mm -hmm. said that and girls and okay. um, yeah. So, and I'm, I'm trying not to do that anymore. Well, no, I'm not criticizing you on that. What I'm trying to do is determine if these are two independent sources or because you have to understand, maybe you maybe you realize that this is now, Lisa, but I certainly understand out of 260 disappearances, is that sometimes when people put things out, their stories about what happened regarding a missing person before the person went missing, then suddenly they'll get somebody you know, that'll email them and say, oh yeah, I know all about that. And, and the only, but it's all fake. They're really right. just people who need attention or trolls or they have some sort of, sort of man, mental problem or whatever else, they really don't know anything, but they can make it sound like they know something because of something that you already posted online. Meaning it's not an independent story. They're just riffing off of what you already wrote. And so that's what I'm trying to determine here. Was it something mm -hmm. that you already, you'd already put out the shoplifting story, then right away somebody's t emailing you about that same story. Right. Trying to push my buttons or something, but um, the only thing I, was I, I got her phone number and mm -hmm. I told the uh, caseworker at National Center for Exploited Children about her talking to me and whether she spoke to her or not, I don't know, but she quit responding to me on uh, Facebook. So, All right. Well, that's not a yeah. very good sign either. Okay. So we're not, so your mother brings up this shoplifting story could be that you know they get caught brenda's afraid of of course her, her, her father with who we've already talked about she's going to get in trouble and then she runs away not a totally implausible story the problem is that your mother didn't bring it up until the mid 80s and these names that were given to you by somebody else we don't even know if they exist right all right and when your mother told you the shoplifting story originally did she mention any names um do you remember she uh the only ones that uh she mentioned i'm trying to think um was two boys that had uh walked her to the bus station was right, what just, one just didn't have anything to do with the shoplifting no. sticking to the shoplifting he didn't know the girl's names no okay so then we start wondering how did your mother know about this shoplifting story in the first place if it even happened right Okay. Right. All right. All right. So we have this story. I'm not sure what to make of it. I can certainly understand uh, many children have run away because they've gotten in trouble for something that's very common. The problem is the story, you know, if it happened in 1974, which makes it 38 years old or 48 years old, uh, seems still to have a lot of holes in it. And so I, I'm not sure what to make of that. Listeners will decide for themselves. Let's move on to this. Now, there are multiple stories regarding that disappearance date and what Brenda might have done. Let's just start here. Uh, these allegedly two boys escorted her to a bus depot. When did you hear about this? How did you hear about this? Um, you've sent me, of course, the messages, the correspondence you've had with at least one of these, uh, of course, they're men now, but what do you want to say about this, uh, this story about the boys escorting Brenda to a bus depot? I said, it all comes from what my mother told me. It, it, it was just my mom telling me that, uh, she went to school that day mm -hmm. and left sometime that day from school. And the two boys walked her part of the way to the bus station I've spoken to both of those boys and they said they have not, they did not uh, do that. Um, so, but like I said, all I have is what my mother's told me. 
-hmm. That's it. Okay. And this was, once again, a story that did not pop up until your father died. Right. All right. So this popped up around the same time that the shoplifting story popped up? All is the same. Like, I, I sat down with my mother and I told her to tell me what happened. Um, and it that's what she told me. You know, it started with mm -hmm. the then and I guess she was scared to tell him. Um and that she'd went to school that Monday morning and apparently had stolen a hundred dollars out of my dad's wallet mm -hmm. because Brenda needed an iron and shirt and the ironing board and iron was in my mom and dad's bedroom. And while she was in there, she took a hundred dollars out of my dad's wallet. And the reason mom said that they knew that is because Brenda had put the wallet back in the wrong pocket. My dad must have kept it in you know, one pocket all the time mm -hmm. in the back. Um, and then she didn't come home from school. That okay. So did you ever ask your mother regarding the, either, either the shoplifting story or this bus depot story with these two boys? And we'll get back to the boys in a second. I mean, did you ever ask her, why did you wait all this time before bringing this all up? Um, and she might have brought it up, but I was too young. Uh, it was me that brought it up wanting to know because I want to know where my sister is, what happened to her. So after the phone calls when my dad passed away is when I was like, I was old enough then to say, where is she? Why are you saying come home? Why, why are you coming home then? You know, it really had me wondering because uh, it's seven. I didn't know what had happened. I right. wouldn't even know way was back then well i guess uh, what i'm saying lisa is that you did um we didn't automatically go from 1974 to 1985 i'm just wondering maybe like in 1980 or 1981 being around your parents like you were that your mother never brought these things up that's uh, i'm asking you no, no uh insight into that at all i don't remember her telling anybody anything like overhearing it on the phone about her or mm -hmm. anything sitting around the house talking to her neighbors. I never heard her mention Brenda. Okay, very good. So we have these boys. This is, once again, a story that came from your mother. And then finally, with the Facebook page being created, you actually tracked down these two, at least one of them, or have you spoken to both of them? I've spoken to both boys, mm -hmm. okay. either through Facebook or on the phone. Okay. And they said they have no idea what your mother's talking about. Yeah, that they did not walk her to the bus station or partway to the bus station. It was not them. Okay. Uh, were these two boys even, did they even know your sister, Brenda? As far as I know, yes, because one lived in the mobile home park mm -hmm. um, and was friends with my sisters. That that my two other sisters do know them, two boys. Okay. All right. So maybe... Uh, conceivable, but once again, these boys are saying they have no idea uh, that that just never happened. Uh, have both of them ever, or either of them, given their opinion? Do they remember Brenda going missing? Do they remember uh, having an idea of what might have happened? Have they ever offered up their own theory, being that they claim they had nothing, to, of course, to do with Brenda's disappearance? They don't know anything. Have they ever offered up their own opinions to you as to what happened? Um, one of them was the uh, one that told me that uh, my dad was a mean SOB. And mm -hmm. when he see Brenda, he just thought that she was grounded uh, like my dad did, you know, mm -hmm. for punishing kept her in the house. And that's just what he was saying about it. But what, when uh, she didn't come, I see being grounded from school for maybe, maybe a day, but when she didn't come back for a week, they, they've right. never offered up a, a, a to, I guess, an in total theory about her disappearance. Maybe you could come up with any theory for her missing one day of school, but when she goes missing for a month, you know, a year, then it's more than a grounding. They haven't offered up their own theories, being that they claim they had nothing to do with it. Right. Um, and he was older than me. He was more of their age and hang out with them. And he might have said something to my other sisters in passing mm -hmm. through school, but I wasn't old enough to be around that group of friends so okay but in in contacting these two guys now here in in the 21st century look them looking back at 1974 do they have currently have theories as to what happened to brenda 
Um, one of them feels like I might have done something to her. Okay. I'd say. All right. But just to be clear, these guys are claiming they did not see Brenda on the day of the disappearance. They surely did not escort her anywhere and nothing like that. that. I mean, they never said they didn't see her. They said that they weren't the ones that walked her to the bus station. They don't know why my mother would say that. Okay. Now let's move on to this. Now, of course, your sisters have um, uh, kind of on purpose, my part, uh, you, you know, have not been mentioned too much in this discussion, but now we're going to have to talk about them uh, a little bit more. Of course, they are, uh, they're still around. They're still alive. Um, and, uh, but there is a story and you can say, tell uh, the listeners and viewers when this story happened that one of your sisters claimed that Brenda came to her during school and said, yeah, I'm taking off. And of course, Brenda was never seen again. Uh, when did this story come out? When did the sister tell you this? Um, and then she changed her story. What do you want to say about all of that? Right. My my sister, see, when I questioned her about Brenda, you know, later on in life, uh, as I'm digging deeper and deeper and trying to get her known that she is still missing, um, I just started asking her, what do you remember? And she's like, I remember her coming to me at the breezeway. There was a breezeway at Fred and Lynn. And it was there when I went to school there, too. And Brenda told her, she says, I'm leaving. And Sissy's like, uh, OK, why? You know, it's like I, I, she just didn't believe her. But um, then she told me when he got home and she didn't come home. She just started, you know, she really meant it. She was leaving. But where? And then when I questioned Sissy again about it later on, she's like, I don't remember telling you that. So my sister um, is forgetting things or she just forgot she told me. Um, she is the the second to the oldest. She does have health issues. She's She's had some issues in her life too. So I felt like if they'd have been questioned back then, maybe they would have remembered better. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, but nobody was questioned back then that I'm aware of, uh, even Brenda's friend said nobody asked us about her. When did your, this sister claims that she saw Brenda on that day and Brenda was taking off. When did this, when did you, what you just told it, uh, what year would this have been that she finally told you this story? I can't remember the exact year. I just know it when I was, you know, the the facebook and then her being uh a, you know in the the database for the national center of missing exploited children so mm -hmm. 2013 2014 mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. somewhere because the, the caseworker wanted me to ask them you know questions mm -hmm. the detective wanted me to ask them questions um uh, but sure. this detective yeah this detective now finally spoke to him because I kept telling them, maybe they will tell you something they don't want to tell me. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, after, certainly possible. Yeah. After all these years, this detective now has finally talked to them about what I don't know. All don't right. Know. So, uh, so your sister, the not the oldest, uh, not Brenda, not the next, but the next one that's just older than you are, says that she saw Brenda on that day, and she told you this. She didn't tell you this until like 2013, 2014. Um, it was, uh, it was Barbara, sissy, not, not mm -hmm. Jan. It was okay. the, that told me that she saw her in the breezeway and I told her she was leaving. And then when I asked her again, just to kind of check my notes, because, you know, I try to keep notes and I'm terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. and I asked her again about it and a couple of other things that I'd asked her about, but, um, she said she didn't remember telling me that. And it had been uh a few years few years between these two conversations yes yes okay when she told you that that she's she's claiming she saw brenda when you first heard that was that a total surprise to you you'd never heard that from uh before from anybody no i don't even know if brenda was even at school that day okay. I, I i i don't know okay all right so you're all these years later uh, your one sister tells you this, and then a couple years out later, let's just say 2016, you bring it up again. She's saying, I don't remember saying that. Right. But that didn't happen. Right. Okay. 
Let's move on to this. Now, there is another story. This uh, this is going back to your mother. I think this is another uh, story from your mother. Uh, the bus stop woman. When did this come up? Is this all around that same time of the uh, shoplifting, the bus stop depot? All this, all this stuff came out after your father died in 1985. Why don't you tell the listeners about the bus stop woman or bus depot woman, the story? Yes. And it, I believe it's in the newspaper clipping too, as well. So, um, but when I asked my mother questions about Brenda and it, it started, you know, with went to school that day, uh, took the money from my dad's wallet, uh, the shoplift and all that. And then she said, when Brenda left school, she went to the Greyhound bus station that was right across the street from the school, practically on route one, that Brenda, uh, bought a ticket. Uh, didn't know where to, but the attendant that day, uh, when she was questioned is what this was from that, uh, she remembers Brenda buying a ticket, but she don't know what, sorry, it's thunderstorm in here. That's all right. Uh, heard that or not, um, that Brenda bought a ticket, but she don't know where she bought the ticket to, or if she even got on the bus. But around lunchtime, the attendant needed to lock up and go run some errands. And she didn't want to leave Brenda sitting there by herself. So she took Brenda with her to run these errands. Now, my dad's sister, Aunt Jenny, uh, verified that mom had spoken to her about Brenda buying a bus ticket and wanted her to go wait for Brenda at the Greyhound bus station there, thinking she might come to Marion, Virginia, where my Aunt Jenny lived. And my Aunt Jenny said she waited and she even got on one of the buses and checked to see if Brenda was on the bus, um, but never was. Um, So whether that's true or not, why this lady would take Brenda with her, uh, it was a red flag to me when my mom told me that as well. Um, So I I just have the question, how would your mother know any of that? Right. Even if it were true, how would she know any of that? Who would tell her that? And why wouldn't she, if she knew all this, why wouldn't she just go get Brenda and bring her back home? Yeah, because apparently the detective ruled her as a runaway case closed. You're an unfit mother. So how does my mother get all this? I have no idea. Okay. So I was young and dumb still when I questioned her about this. And as I started writing a book, I have this notebook and I, I kind of sent you the things and I typed out things. And mm-hmm. as yes. I doing scratch paper and I'm taking notes and I'm trying to do this, you know, with my no high school diploma, trying to, you know, make sure I dot my eyes and cross Mm -hmm. my teeth, you know, and it's not in the best of shape, but it's what I know and what I've been told. And I just try to put it all together in this notebook to keep track of it. Okay. So, all right, so we got this other story once again, like the the boys taking her to the bus depot and the sh- shoplifting story. You know, the, I'm not saying you know it just doesn't have a lot of context to any of it. Context to any of it, and then we have the sister, the story from your one sister. It's also kind of the same thing. She's telling the story, and then a couple years later, says that she never said it. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Uh, and and you did try uh, to track this woman down, and she's deceased, right? This woman who uh, worked at the bus station or something. You tried to track her down, and she's deceased. So I, I have two ladies in Virginia that help me and do research with me, and they they feel like she's deceased now. I mean, I think she was like 80s or something that they found her on um, the research, but um, – yeah. Okay. No act whatsoever on her Facebook or anything. Okay. Let's move on to this. Uh, although I, I'm going to just, it's kind of already probably pretty obvious to everybody already anyway, but I'm going to just ask you a uh, point blank. Uh, before your father died, your parents together, did they ever talk about Brenda at all? Not that I remember. No. Okay. What about not for when you'd have Christmas, Thanksgiving, family reunions? Did other people, like you just mentioned, your father had a sister. None of these adults came over for any of these functions and said, you know, what's going on with Brenda? Nobody ever brought it up. 
once again to your once again your experience um what i remember is life went on without her to be honest that's what i feel like life went on um we still went and visited family members um my aunt jenny my dad's sister was the most that we would uh, go stay with her Mm -hmm. after my dad's parents passed away because um we would go there. Um, it was short visits, um, but we would go. Um, they they come to our house too, but like I said, I don't remember them just sitting down and talking like, "Where is she? What? Where? Where do you think she'd be?" I don't remember any of that happening. Okay, your father, as we've established already multiple times, your father died in the 1980s, I guess, from cancer. Um, just on his own while he was like, I guess we would say proverbial deathbed. Did he ever mention Brenda and did he ever offer up a theory as to what happened to her? I mean, he's the one who you saw crying in your room, you know, saying he's lost his girl. uh, He's lost his daughter Uh, on his deathbed. Anything like that? Did he ever talk about Brenda? No, no. Um, Not to me. Uh, Okay. I know. There was a, the one time that I'd mentioned also in my book about um, a Wednesday night church night. Um, if you remember me telling you that one where he came in the back of the church weeping and yep. uh, the preacher dismissed church. So that was right after she went missing as well, because I, my dad came into the back of the church and he'd never went to church with us. Even our family portrait for church. My dad's not in it because he didn't go to church. Okay. Um, oh, him coming in the back of the church weeping and the, the preacher dismissed church and everybody went home except for who else. I don't know who all stayed in there with them. Maybe a couple of my mom's friends from church that lived in our neighborhood as well. Um, but that pastor's passed away or preacher mm-hmm. has passed away as well. So, okay. All right, so maybe that's one other time right after uh, Brenda went missing. It was a moment of weakness or, or, or something that your father was showing. But you're, you're te- what you've said, though, that was very rare for your father, correct? That was the first time I've ever seen my dad. Okay. So he All never right. went to church. Okay. Let's move on to your mother. Now, of course, we've, we've spoken about her. She's told some stories. We're not calling her a liar. It just doesn't seem there's any facts uh, that can be recovered here in the 21st century to back up some of those stories. But uh, your mother lived on, though, for quite a while. All these stories that you've mentioned, uh, it seems they came out right after your father died. But your mother did not die until the 21st century, right? 2015. 2015. So very, very recently. Um, over all those years, uh, after these stories that she told in the late in the late 1980s, uh, did she ever bring up Brenda? Did you ever talk to her about Brenda when you would see her? Let's just pick a year, 1998. When you saw her in 1998, uh, would could you bring up Brenda? Would she bring up Brenda? What did she have to say about Brenda over the last, I guess that would be 30 years of her life? What'd she say? She would only talk to me if I mentioned it. It's not like we would sit down and she'd be like, well, I thought of Brenda today. It wasn't anything like um okay i yeah i i had told my mom things that i was to to try to help find her and you know ask her again and she would you know tell me the same story you know uh nothing ever changed it was like she had it down pat um the second detective had questioned mom and um he had mentioned something about her being found in Lake Ridge and uh, mom said, yeah, I had heard that. Um, So when the detective spoke to me about it and he said, well, your mom knew she was in Lake Ridge and if she was okay with it. And I'm like, I want to hear that conversation. Um, I don't believe it. And where did she go to school then? Because she was still 13. She needed to go to school. Right. Um, and if she was allowed to stay out of the home, and if it was that bad that she was allowed to stay out of the home, why were we still in the home? That's what I questioned the detective. Yeah. Um, I never got a response from him. So, um, 
and then my mom passed away, um, I never got to ask her about that because I found this out after mom passed away that he had that conversation with her. Okay. How did your mother feel when you started the Facebook page before she died? Right. Um, she didn't really have much to say. Um, she just, you know, let me do what I felt I needed to do. Uh, she didn't comment on the page that I'm aware of. Uh, and she, okay. like I said, she just let me do what I thought I needed to do without any, anybody's help. But I was just doing it by myself. Okay. All right. And then she passed away, you said, in 2015. Yes. Okay. Regarding Brenda's stuff, of course, uh, she goes missing. It doesn't sound if she did run away. It doesn't sound like she had a suitcase or anything. Uh, what happened to all her stuff, her clothes and books and things like that? What happened to all of that? I'm not aware of what happened to any of it. I'm assuming my two older sisters might have got her clothing if they could fit them. Mm -hmm. But any other belongings, even the diaries, if she took them with her or if my parents found them. Uh, the Miss Beasley doll, I don't know where it went. Um, All right. So you have no recollection of them, uh, of your parents or somebody going into a room and like clearing it out? I guess it did clear it out. Who ended up getting her room after she went missing? I'm assuming my sister, Sissy, would have got dibs on the room. Uh, shortly after that, though, she had ran away uh, to be with her child that she was pregnant with, his father. Okay. And uh, so then we had a new mobile home then, and it was a bedroom. Uh, so Jan oh, has, yeah, and uh, me and my still shared bump beds in the same room. Okay. So you have no recollection of uh, her stuff being moved out. Just really, if she had, like you said, that doll earlier, you have no idea what happened to anything. No, I don't. Okay. Let's move on to this. Uh, and maybe once again, this is one of those things maybe uh, after uh, many, many episodes of Unfound, the listeners can pick up on very quickly is that um, – it's safe to say I would, this will just be my words. You have a kind of a, um, you know, a peculiar relationship between yourself and your sisters regarding Brenda's disappearance. Uh, I think that the listeners probably can tell that you're doing this pretty much on all on your own. So I'll just ask, how have your two older sisters and your younger brother reacted to, for example, when you started the Facebook page back about 10 years ago, how have they reacted to all of this work that you're, you're doing? Uh, they wish me luck. Um, when I question them, you know, and they're like, I don't remember, I don't remember. Of course, my brother was too young to remember anything. Sure. Uh, and they just, you know, well, I don't, I don't know. So, and then uh, I he quit talking. Me. Um, he got called by the detective that's working the case now and he called me right afterwards and said you know why do you why does the detective think dad might have something to do with Brenda missing and I was like because of what people have told me he called me a crazy bee and never wanted to have anything else to do um, so I haven't spoken to my brother over a year hmm. i haven't seen him since gosh i don't even know the last time i seen my brother he's in the air force right out of school uh my brother uh my mom up and left my brother when he was in high school left a note at home and said you have four days to get out of the house my brother didn't even drive uh, he had to move in with somebody i didn't know this till recently i i never knew that my dad Jenny told me that as well. I don't know why she didn't even call and tell me. Why did that so, happen to you? Why did that happen? She ran off with another man that she was married to. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That black <laughs> 30 what? days. Of, yeah. When my dad passed away, my mom moved to Marion, Virginia. 
mm-hmm. him and my brother and my mom moved to Virginia to be closer to Aunt Jenny because Aunt Jenny was more of a sister to my mom. Uh, they had a close relationship. And that was my go-to person uh, when my mom passed away. But um, they moved there, and my mom met a gentleman that had to be locked up at night for alcoholism. And she had a brand new Chevy Cavalier red station wagon, little mini station wagon. And him and her hit a telephone pole and about killed them both. And uh, yeah, so she married him and he blacked her eye. And she was at my, the black guy after being married to him for 30 days and said she was going to get the marriage annulled. And the next thing I hear uh, they're living in North Carolina. Not that she left my brother, I just assumed my brother joined the Air Force and went on about adult life. Um, yes. and thing was fine. But later on in years, I find out he left them a note and up and left and moved to North Carolina with this husband that she was married to at the time. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you think that, uh, uh, I'm just going to ask you a question. Do you think that your sisters and your brother have, of course, once again, how healthy your brother could be is questionable anyway, because he was only like uh, three or four years old when this happened. But the older sisters, do you think that uh, maybe they, of course, we've already said your sister told you one story and then two years later said she never said that. Um, do they kind of feel maybe that you're um, tarnishing your parents's uh, your parents' name by doing this? Of course, we don't know what happened, but right. do you think that's part of it or what? I feel they know my dad was strict and um, they want me to just leave it alone. Okay. That I'm crazy for pushing and uh, enough is enough. Let it rest is the way I feel they're being now that because I sent them a message the other day and they didn't respond. So they, okay. they've had a questions. They're done. Okay. Gotcha. So my interpretation of what you've said today is that you really, uh, of course you were already asking things way back in uh, uh, the mid to late eighties after your father died. And that's when we got all these stories from your mother. But then really since 2012, 2013, when you started your Facebook page is really when you started to uh, start working on this. What, what was it about that particular year uh, that you then decided to start doing this? Did something change in your life or, or what that 2013 or whatever it was became the year? What was it? Well, after all that mom told me didn't add up, and not having a high school diploma, I, I, I have this notebook. I didn't mention it to you because it's, all, it's very old. Uh, mm -hmm. When I moved to Kentucky in 1992, I sat down and got every address to so every driver's license, DMV, and birth certificate. They're all in this notebook. And I wrote mm -hmm. a letter to a single one of them, handwritten letter, no copy a letter and send all copies. I didn't even know how to copy anything back then either in 92. Yes. Uh, I was a mom, a mom of three young girls and I packed up a, a car with my children and left Virginia and came to Kentucky to start a new life in 1992. So I did this to try to find out if she had gotten a driver's license, if she was married, what her married name would be. Um, I got a couple of responses back for a fee. We can look. Um, yeah. Uh, one letter said we have a, a Brenda Sue Davidson. Uh, here's her information. If you'd like to reach out to her. And I called her and she said, I'm sorry, I'm not your sister. I wish I was. Uh, so that was very sweet of her, whether it was or not. I don't know. I could have been talking to my sister, but back then I didn't yeah. start the, the national center for missing and exploited children or the Facebook. It was in 92 when I did all that and wrote those letters, um, I had a Ziploc uh, bag of all the letters and stuff that came back to me asking for fees and stuff. Um, but it had got misplaced. I, I don't know where it is, but I have the book. Um, and so from there, 
to the girls in Virginia telling me to reach out to National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And I got a caseworker and then she started asking me questions. And then I even went to Alexandria, Virginia, drove myself over the West Virginia mountains and got into Alexandria, Virginia. And I had a news reporter, Angie Goff, do a, a story about my sister and it aired on uh, News Channel 4. And that was back in, um, I could tell you the date real quick. I did that uh, May 8, uh, 2018. Okay. Uh, so I, I went all the way there to be interviewed. And that was my first time going back to the mobile home park since I left in 92. Wow. Yeah. So the, the next detective, he started asking me questions. And so I dug deeper. I've done my ancestry DNA. I've also done my DNA. Uh, my mom was willing to go do her DNA. And then uh, her caseworker reached out to me and said, would a sibling do my DNA? And me trying to make light of the subject, I said, what are you trying to do? Tell me my dad was the milkman. Ha ha. Uh. But yeah, they said, um, your mom's never made it. Uh, DNA never made it uh, to us. So we need another DNA. And um, my mom was cremated. So it's not like I could go back and get her DNA. And so my sister, Sissy, was willing to do the DNA because I asked her to. So her DNA and my DNA is out there uh, for me, Jane Doe, that uh, does come at, uh across the, the database. Um, I've done our story uh, through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in uh, July 12, 2019, and they air it on their webpage. And uh, the caseworker uh, told me to do a video like I was talking to Brenda and asking her to, you know, reach out to me. If she doesn't want to speak to me, at least call the 1-800-THE-LOST and let them know it's okay. Um, yeah, I, I've just I keep doing all I know to do. Yeah. And sure. Where do I go now? Sure. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, Dateline NBC did a uh, interview with me over the phone, and if uh, you go on the Dateline NBC website and uh, type in her name, they they wrote up an article about her. Um, I just. I don't know. I keep trying mm -hmm. to keep turning over rocks. Sure. I'm just not going to give up. But sure. like I said, I think feel like enough is enough. Let it go, Lisa. And I can't let it go. No. Yeah. Uh, as uh, you know, maybe this is something that's just been on my mind a lot recently. Maybe this summer is the uh, looking back over the like almost six years now that the podcast ex has existed. Um, a lot of family members are like yourself, Lisa, in that you're the only person in your family who's doing anything. Um, yeah. This is uh, not unusual. Maybe not as a unique set of circumstances that you have for Brenda's disappearance, but even disappearances that we might just say are a little more straightforward. Um, you yeah, just have one family member who's, and everybody has just moved on. And yeah. Um, why that is a lot of different reasons. Uh, I really don't want to get into them now, but a lot of different reasons and maybe each disappearance is just a little bit different. Um, for your, for your disappearance, for Brenda's disappearance, of course, I think a lot of people are going to come away from this interview, you know, being suspicious of at least your father, as I've told you, and I'll just say it publicly. Uh, and especially considering we know what the results were of this disappearance that ended up being a murder. This does have a lot of the same feel as the disappearance of Andrea Bowman, young girl around the same age. And her parents also said, yeah, she stole money and took off and ran away. And then we found out that that wasn't true at all. Uh, the big difference there, though, is that she did not have any older siblings or siblings around her age. Uh, you know, to kind of be witnesses or to see the after effects or anything. Whereas we do have that with, uh, of course, Brenda's. And, and of course, you've talked about that um, during the course of this uh, interview. So um, unfortunately, uh, Lisa, you're not alone or maybe fortunately or unfortunately, 
uh, you're not alone in being the only person in your family, um, you know, doing this. A lot of other guests have been in the same boat you you are in. Um, so why don't you uh, give out that uh, Facebook page that we've talked so much about now. Why don't you give the name of it out right now uh, so everybody can go there and like it and become members there, please. Okay. It's a uh, fine Brenda Sue Davidson. Um, and like I said, I, I did that. That was the first thing. Uh, my niece helped me do that because mm -hmm. I didn't even know about Facebook until they said, why don't you make her a Facebook page? Yeah. So it's great. Two days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you're an administrator there. Anybody else an administrator? Maybe your uh, niece is also an administrator there. You, you kind of run it. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Um, any final words before we complete this interview, Lisa? Um, one other thing uh, was, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or not, uh, about my sisters. When I was going through my mom's things after she passed away, you know, I come across my dad's obituary and they didn't even list Brenda as a daughter on the obituary. And my sister Jan said, what well, does say the living i say like, so what are you trying to say brenda's dead i mean mm -hmm. she was daughter oh no no i'm not saying that. so that i found that odd too that she wasn't even listed on my dad's obituary and of course mom had to make that you know my dad didn't make it he was gone yes. so i didn't thought that or not or if i even sent you his uh little newspaper clipping of his obituary yeah. or not we talked about that um, you know, it is odd, but yeah. I, I don't think it's rare, uh, especially when, you know, you get into a, this, you know, um, a disappearance that's 11 years old at the time of your father's disappearance in 1985. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm going to guess this isn't the first time that a missing child or a missing parent or a missing sibling or someone has been left off an obituary. You would think the nice thing to do would be to include her. Um, but if there is some feeling within your family, we of course, we don't know what happened. There are a lot of different suspicions. But if there is still some bitterness that maybe thinking she really did run off, well, then, you know, she really didn't want to be part of our family anyway, so why mention her? Yeah. I'm, and not, saying I, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I'm yeah. sure there's that line of thinking out there. Right. And, um, of course, when I started hiking the Appalachian Trail, um, there was a newspaper uh, that wanted to do a story about my hike, uh, Dan in Woodstock, Virginia. Yeah. And some of the people, after the article ran, they were telling Jan, well, we didn't even know you had a missing sister. So she don't talk about it, that's for yeah. sure. Or so they wouldn't have said that to her. Yeah. Um, so... Yep. They just like just want me to let it go, I think, and I just I can't. And okay. that's what I told the detective when he asked me that. Why are you still? Why are you the only one mm -hmm. searching? Why isn't anybody else? And I was like, I can't speak for anybody else, but she's my sister, and I'm gonna keep searching. Yeah. So. Uh, you are. Uh, allow me to give you no doubt, Lisa, but you are doing the right thing. You, you, I, I realize that obviously you've ticked some people off. And yeah. we're, we didn't even get into some of these other things. I thought just the best to stay away from, you know, regarding Facebook and some people coming after you and everything, which are totally uncalled for. But, yeah. you know, there's that saying, you know, when you're over, people who get flack are usually over the target. So um, that's just the way it is. I know I get it too. So I would not let that deter you uh, in any way. You're certainly in the right doing this. It's certainly your right as her sister to try to figure out what happened to her, whether she really did run away or is something, maybe one of your parents did something or somebody else did something, whatever, whatever really did happen. Um, you certainly have the right to do this and, you know, don't let ever let anybody change your mind on that. That's crazy. Right. That's, that's crazy. Cause like, yeah, talking about my dad and his alcoholism after my dad passed away, my mom started drinking too. Um, it went, you know, first wine cooler, and orange juice and vodka and that was just um surprising to me after all the fussing she did about my dad and then she turned to alcohol herself 
and uh, even tried to commit suicide twice by uh, taking pills and having to get her stomach pumped out. So there was an issue there, something going on with her. I know. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So you've talked about, maybe I should ask you about this. Um, you know, you've, you've mentioned this book. This is just something you're, con you're still working on this book. Uh, you sent me sections of it or pages from it. This is something you're still working on or what? Um, I don't know if I can show you. This is, um, this is the book. <laughs> okay. And this is what the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children did an age progression. Um, this is when she would have been 58. And when I went uh, in 2018 to um, do okay. the interview off. And in this book, uh, pages, you see all these pages? These yes. All these pages are everything that I have found out. Um, screenshot and printed off uh, Facebook messages because uh, I even had a family member tell me about my dad backing her in the corner and um, holding her arms behind her back and she says you you do anything and not my dad will kill you mm -hmm. um, so I've even got that printed out um, just any anything that I can okay. I can put in say that this is what at this time do you do you plan to turn all of that into an actual book? I realize you have that that binder there, but do you are you actually planning to turn it into a, a kind of a book that is published or what? I haven't thought of that. Um, okay. For me to keep track, the girls in Virginia are like, "What about mm -hmm. this? What about that?" And um, mm -hmm. they keep me on my toes because they're so much better at uh, researching than I am. Um, so. Um, I even had a lady reach out to me and she painted rocks for Brenda and passed them all around in Virginia, Woodbridge area and even handed detective uh, that was uh, the detective at the time a rock personally to him, whether he still has it or not, I don't know, but just that the care that she took into doing that. And she uh, mailed me one and I carry it with me hiking um, and take pictures of it wherever I'm hiking. Okay. So. Well, Lisa, I appreciate you being on this episode of Unfound. And that was my August 7th, 2022 interview with Lisa Davidson, youngest sister of Brenda Davidson. I thank her for appearing on both audio and video for this episode. Lisa provided me with a wealth of pictures and information regarding Brenda's disappearance. Please peruse all of it on Brenda's page at our website, theunfoundpodcast.com. Before I get into my summation, I need to thank a listener who goes by the Roracle, who alerted me to Brenda's disappearance and gave me Lisa's contact information. Noticing that Brenda's disappearance is very much like Andrea Bowman's is not something that can be unseen. Once you realize it, it pervades all thinking on Brenda's case. Really, the similarities are there for everyone to notice. The story that Brenda stole money before disappearing is exactly like what Dennis Bowman said in 1989 when Andrea went missing. Both of the girls' fathers were abusive. However, it seems in different ways. Like the Davidsons, the Bowmans didn't do a lot to try to track Andrea down. In both situations, things seemed to get back to normal for both families fairly quickly. And there are other similarities, including Brenda being four days away from being 14 years old and Andrea actually being 14 when she was murdered by her father, Dennis Bowman. The question we have to ask ourselves, though, is, do the similarities cause us to be biased in our thinking? Meaning, the cases are very similar. Also, we know Dennis Bowman killed Andrea. Thus, we might too quickly jump to the conclusion that Brenda's father killed her. And this might be a mistake on our part, because there are differences in the two disappearances as well. 
For Dennis Bowman, he succeeded because there was nobody else to stop him or to be a witness. Whereas Brenda had two sisters very close to her age. How exactly did Brenda's father get away with harming Brenda without those two noticing? Or are we to believe they've kept quiet about something all these years? Likewise, my perception is many people believed Dennis killed Andrea because she told a school official that he had been sexually abusing her. Whereas, although Brenda's father was certainly stern and probably went too far with his discipline, there's nothing I've heard that Brenda had made any complaints to any school or government officials. What's probably the biggest difference, though, is with Andrea's murder, from the very second her biological mother, Kathy, found out in 2010 that Andrea had been missing going back to 1989, she suspected Dennis killed Andrea, and even suspected where Andrea's remains would be found. And Kathy ended up being correct. Whereas, there's nothing like that for Brenda's case. There is no one out there pointing the finger at Brenda's father, or claiming to know exactly where Brenda's remains, if she is deceased, will be found. Not even Lisa has done that. And we can't forget this. By 1989, Dennis Bowman had already killed one person, and should I say, at least one person. So he had experience. Brenda's father, I've not heard anything to believe he is suspected in any other disappearances or murders. So, although I personally see the similarities between Andrea's disappearance, which we now know as a murder, and Brenda's disappearance, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions because of that. Because the differences have to be factored in too. One other point before I finish. Did you get the feeling that Lisa feels quite alone in all of this? Brother won't talk to her. Sisters won't talk to her. Parents are deceased. Police are unhelpful. I certainly got that feeling. I want to tell her that yes, life will go on. But that doesn't mean she will have to continue doing her work alone. She is now part of the unfound family. I'll leave the theorizing up to you. And that's the program. Right now, while you are in your podcast platform, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, wherever, give Unfound a five-star review, a thumbs up, whatever that platform allows. I thank you for listening. I'm Ed Densel, and you've just finished this episode of Unfound.